I like working in Oceania. They're much younger here. I worked on Holland America for many, many years. They're a little older over there. Nothing wrong with that. They embrace their seniors on Holland America. They have games for their seniors. They have they have games like they'll take three guys with prostate problems, send them in the men's room, and yell, laundry market says, try to go! And, uh, <laughs> the wives are out there, hurry up, Lou, focus! Come on, you can do it! You're going to win a hat! Hurry up, push! <laughs> So uh, last year when I turned 58, I bought myself a colonoscopy for my birthday because, well, my, you know, you get older, you start work. I take pills now. I have pills for blood pressure, pills for cholesterol. I have the plastic case, you know, that helps me Monday through. On Holland America, those cases are on wheels. I swear to God, they come up that way. You can see it's like a tackle box coming up. I didn't know in order to have a colonoscopy that your insides have to be emptier than the U.S. Treasury. Nobody told me about that. In fact, I've decided for my next colonoscopy, I'm just going to go to Egypt, have a salad, and then fly back, and it should be good. <laughs> if you've never been to Egypt, here's a tip. The salad's not supposed to move, okay? Just so you know when you go there. And I have a wonderful insurance company, Humana Insurance. I pay $10,000 a year. They cover nothing. It's a perfect plan. And seriously, I have a $300 cap on preventive maintenance. So they refused to pay for my colonoscopy, which totaled almost $3,000, and I had to pay for it. And if you're familiar with the procedure, that's like having it done twice. And, uh, <laughs> so, and uh, the doctor writes a prescription for something called Go Lightly. And uh, now all the guys in here know what I'm talking about, and I'm going to keep it not too graphic here, but basically, I went to Walgreens, which is a pharmacy in Florida, and, uh, and the kit consists of a plastic, empty plastic jug, two uh, Lyme x lac pills, uh, a norovirus, and uh, you take it all and then you hold on for a weekend. You're like, yeah! And, uh, but they wanted $89 for this Go Lightly kit. And I don't care about money. I'm a crazy Irishman. I'll spend two hundred dollars on a nice bottle of red wine, but I couldn't see dropping ninety bucks on this. So I asked the girl if they had a generic version, you know, which they did for nineteen ninety five. But it wasn't called Go Lightly. It was called Colon Blow. And I'm like, you know, they obviously wanted you to go for the big ticket item there. So I. You know what? I'm getting older and things are breaking down. I just had an MRI on my brain. That's another story. They thought I might have had a mini stroke or God. Anybody have an MRI? It's noisy. You're in there for 30 minutes and just bang it and then bang it and bang it. It reminded me I worked at a honeymoon resort one time and they put me between two. Never mind. Um, I was a single guy between two of those big park shaped tub places. But anyway, my I just fired my family doctor. That's true. I never thought much of him anyway, but he turned cheap. This sounds like a danger for a lot, but this is true. I, I needed an EKG done in the office. This guy was so cheap, he bought one of those multi-purpose machines. It was an EKG, a fax, a copy, or a scanner, I swear to God. I'm having my heart checked and somebody's blood work's coming out the other end. I'm like, this can't be that accurate. I'm, I'm happy to be alive. I almost checked out about 14 years ago. I was... Working on a ship called the Norwegian Dream, we were sailing the Greek Isles, a beautiful part of the world, Mykonos, Santorini, Rose, I recommend it, just don't get sick there. And uh, I was on stage in the middle of my show, just like now, felt like someone was stabbing me. Fast forward, the ship's doctor was in the showroom, waited for me backstage, diagnosed it as acute appendicitis. I said, great doc, what are we going to do? He said, well, Tommy, we have two choices. We can let your appendix burst and you'll probably die of a massive infection. Or tomorrow when we arrive in Heracli on Crete, <laughs> we'll take you off the ship, a Greek surgeon will operate your movement, and you'll probably still die of a massive infection. What would you like to do? <laughs> now, if anybody here is Greek or of Greek descent, please don't be offended, but surgery is just not something you're that good at, okay? <laughs> Diners, you run a hell of a diner. If you ever get to New York and New Jersey, nobody runs a better diner. But if you need surgery, find the Jewish guy. That's all I'm saying. Okay? <laughs> I've never been in the hospital in my life. This is all true. The ship's doctor said, don't worry, Tommy. We're taking it to a private clinic in Crete. And Crete was a private clinic. In the U.S., it was an auto repair garage. Right? <laughs> I'm not kidding. I walk in, the doctor goes, you have to have an x-ray. Because he was Greek. He talked like that. How are you? Good to see you, you know? In fact, last year I was in Piraeus, Greece. I joined the ship. My luggage didn't arrive. I bought no underwear in Greece. I put it on. I talked like that for the rest of the cruise. How are you doing? Good to see you. Here's the money. Marry my daughter. How are you? Good to see you. 
So I needed an x-ray, and the x-ray machine must have leaked radiation because the technician dragged his leg and his eye was hanging out of his pocket. <laughs> and the elevator was broke, I swear to God, and the operating room was on the third floor. So I had to climb three floors to be murdered by four Greek guys I hadn't met yet. I'm climbing the stairs behind the x-ray guy, he's dragging his leg, I'm dragging my leg, it's great now. He takes me to the operating room, the doctors and nurses are waiting for me, smoking cigarettes and drinking coffee. I'm thinking, all right, this isn't very sanitary, but between the nicotine and the caffeine, how long could this homicide take? Five hours and eight minutes. The next day, the doctor goes, it's the largest appendix that we have ever removed. I'm sure you got the right thing there, Star Bros. Take a look around, man. Would you have the lights off? Come on here. The only guy that wore a mask and gloves the whole time I was there was a guy that robbed my room on the fourth night. He was the only one in the right eye. And that is a true story. So, in the Amazon River, have you done the Amazon? I don't get it. That's just me. I'm from Jersey. I don't get a lot of things. I mean, flesh-eating fish and man-eating snakes. And in fact, I write my own material. I was on the internet researching the piranha to write some jokes, and I found a website www.piranhas.com. Turned out to be a dating service for widows in South Florida. I swear to God, <laughs> I'm not making that up. I swear. You know when I get nervous when they arrested the underwear bomber. Remember this guy? The underwear, because remember about three years ago they arrested Richard Reed, the shoe bomber? And ever since then, what do we do when we go to the airport? We take our shoes off. Now they arrest the underwear bomber, like, hold on a minute, hey, come on. Even a Greyhound bus will smell better than that trip. Stop it. There was a real genius, the underwear bomber. If the object of the exercise is to blow yourself up and spend the rest of your life with 72 virgins, you might want to reconsider the position of that bomb. You know what I'm saying? I'm meant. He should have put the bomb in the back. He would have been, because the bomb didn't blow up. It caught on fire. If it was in the back, they would have just figured it was another bad meal on Delta. They would never have locked him up. Leave him alone. He had the lunch burrito. Whoa! But I just heard that, I don't know if they're in the room. We actually have people from Norway on board. Are the Norwegians here? And the Norwegians further, further. That's my Norwegian. I worked for NCL for many, many years when it was run by the Norwegians, not the Malaysians. And uh, <coughs> that's nothing ethnic. That's just the way it is. It was they were run by Norwegians, and they were great. They had this uh, liquor in Norway called Akvobit, and it's made from potatoes and dead Norwegians. I don't give a hat. And that's where the language came from. I was on an NCL ship one time, New Year's Eve, sitting at a bar with two Norwegian officers. And they're like, hey, comedy boy, you want to do a shot? I go, yeah, line them up, Sven. I'll drink with you two guys. I had nine shots of aqua beef. I was so drunk, I was talking Norwegian. I swear. I meant the bar going, that's where the language came from. Well, they invented that. They talked like we did. How you doing? How you doing? Forget about it. Nine shots. Now I understand, I'm not making this up, we have people from the Netherlands. Are the Netherlands people? That's my Dutch. Who doesn't love Amsterdam? You ever been there? It's the only city in the world where men enjoy window shopping. Man, oh man, we love it there. If you don't get that joke, it's not a good place for Tiger Woods to live, okay? That joke still works. Tiger Woods. Am I the only one who thought it was really weird that the world's greatest copper went into rehab to keep him swinging? Was that, but you know. Okay, so nobody from, well, I know the people from the Netherlands are here, but uh, I know we have some people from German, Germany. That's my German. If the Germans are here, God love you. We love you. We know who you are. You're the ones wearing those Speedos every day at the pool. I was on the ship one time, 10 day Caribbean cruise, we had a thousand German people on board, you're lovely people, but that means five or low guys wearing a Speedo every day at the pool, which is the custom in Germany to wear a Speedo, it's also the custom to wear two sizes too small, apparently, none of them have to fit, they just, you know, whatever. I was on the cruise, we had an 85 year old German guy wearing a Speedo thong every day at the pool. That's what you want to see in the morning before your first cup of coffee, that mess. You don't need caffeine to wake up. Old Hans will give you a job. Oh, babe, I haven't had breakfast. I was thinking about sausage. You killed that idea. Oh, man. Get him a towel. 
<laughs> okay, now I know we have 17 Australians. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie! There they are. Give them a big round of applause, eh? They'll make more noise than anybody. 17 of them. You just go, Aussie, Aussie, Aussie! They're happy for the rest of the crew. They don't care. They're the best. I've been to Australia many times. It's a fabulous country. A couple years ago, I was at Thursday Island in Australia. We got there on Friday. I guess everybody left on Thursday. It was just uh, two drunks and a one-armed koala, actually. It was kind of like the, the Falkland Islands, which is three penguins in a thunderstorm. There's another joyous destination. But that's where I learned about Bundy Rum. Bundy Rum. See, they don't have Bacardi Rum down there. They have something called Bundy Rum. I had five shots of that. And I was out back going, oi, oi, oi. I know where I came from. It's good to have the Australians. Nobody from New Zealand. I noticed that, huh? Normally we get a few. I was on a cruise last month. We had 200 people from New Zealand. Doesn't seem like a lot. That's like 10% of the country. There's not a lot of people in New Zealand. There's only 4.5 million people in New Zealand and 40 million sheep. So uh, go ahead and write your own joke. I'll give you a minute. I'll get that one. I'm a moron. I, I swear, we had 200 Kiwis on board. I do that joke. After the show, I see one of the guys from New Zealand. I said, I'm sorry, did that joke bother you? He said, nah. So anyway, you know, folks, this one, 